All right, well, the Graffiti Busters program has been around since 1994. It was started by then Mayor Rick Maestrom, who joins us tonight. Thanks so much for being here with us tonight. Happy to be here, Emily. So back when you started the program, it was a volunteer program, but there were so many calls you had to hire a full-time employee. Did you notice a change in the community after you implemented the program? You know, we really did, and it wasn't too long after we implemented it that we just started seeing the effects of it. And when, when somebody comes in, when troublemakers, when vandals, when graffiti taggers come into a city and they see graffiti all around, they see junk cars, they say either nobody's in charge or nobody cares or we can do what we want. And so it's really important, and my goal was a safer, cleaner, more attractive city. And it's really important to get rid of that graffiti. So we promoted it on the radio. We were all over the, the various news media talking about if you call in graffiti busters, we'll have it down in 24 hours. And that 24 hours thing made a big difference. And we committed, we committed resources to it and time to it, and, and it made a difference. It cleaned up the city. 24 hours, that's a big commitment because that's a short period of time. Why was it so important to you to have it down by that time period? People need to know that, that city government can act quickly and that they can make it happen. And it's especially important because we loved it when the graffiti taggers would come back the next day to show off to their buddies what they done, what they had done, and there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. There was nothing to show. There wasn't even a big black splotch because we matched the colors of the background. And that really sort of deflated the graffiti taggers in the city. And it made a difference because they were reflective of various gangs. And we had black gangs, we had white gangs, we had Samoan gangs and Laotian gangs that were all just starting. And it really slowed all of that down and ultimately diminished the tagging. And we didn't, the last three years of my administration, uh, we just, it really slowed down the amount of graffiti we had. Speaking of gangs, when you took office, crime was at a 20-year high. What was your philosophy for fighting it and how did graffiti factor into that? Well, my, my goal was to cut crime in half, to, to reduce it by 50%. And that involved a lot of things. It involved programs like bridge builders to bring all the community, uh, the various communities in Anchorage together. It involved foot patrol by the police. It involved additional police officers. Uh, it involved going to eight-hour days for the, for the police officers and cleaning up the city, getting rid of junk cars. So there was a lot of different things that happened. And it's tough to point out one thing that made the difference. But it's the whole package of every day, every time we met with our executive committee, we talked about bringing crime down. And we got people involved in it. And, and we cleaned up the city, and it happened. And crime, crime went down 43% in six years. So start with the small things, and the small things make a big difference to the big crime. We think it does. When, when somebody gets away with a, a, a bit of vandalism, it says we can get away with more. When somebody steals a candy bar and gets away with it, we can do more. And so at, at some point, you have to stop it. You have to stop the, the graffiti. You have to stop the vandalism. You have to stop the small crimes. Otherwise, you're going to have bigger crimes and more property disruption. Thanks so much for being with us here tonight. Rick Meister, okay. former mayor of Anchorage. Thanks, Emily.